Hi, I'm Jim. Once we've completed the visual examination, we can then do a performance test. The performance test is key. Let's get the equipment together that we're going to need. A pair of gloves that suit you for work. Ideally, you use pre-work cream as well to protect your skin. Some sort of form of roller, uh, a vernier um, if you want to be posh. And the HE Just Extract a Test Kit, which is very simple. There's a link at the bottom of the page and its part number is HAE Text. When it comes to respirators, I choose to use one that's uh, going to last and that fits. This is a JSP Force 8 with self-check filters, so you get face fit tested and every day you can check it still fits, which is fantastic. Air velocity is the most important uh, measurement when it comes to checking for dust collector performance. So with our dust extractors, we need to see a minimum of 20 metres a second air velocity, air speed, into the intake. Minimum. 20 metres a second. Why is that important? Well, respiral dust, the fine stuff, the 5 micron fine killer dust, needs 20 metres a second or more to ensure it's collected and picked up. This short clip demonstrates the importance of 20 metres a second or more of air velocity to capture respirable or inhalable dust. The black hose is connected to a dust extractor and the grey hose is to a vapour generator which generates particles at 5 to 10 microns. As we can see, at this speed, all the particles are captured by the dust extractor. To complete this next stage of the test, open up your test kit, take the test hose out of the box. The test hose comes with a 6mm pressed hole, um, which accepts the, the gauge that we're going to use for the test process. We simply insert the hose in there, they are a good snug fit, so just make sure you get it in 10-15mm minimum, but you know 20mm ideally. The vast majority of M and H class dust extractors have a 60 mil connection spigot, so the test hose fits straight in with a 60 mil external diameter. In this case, this machine, which is M class, has a 50 mil connector. We simply fitted the 60 mil test hose over the existing hose connector and tested from there. So once we've got the test hose in, make sure that the hole's pointing upwards, and again, this is in the instructions as well. Once the hole's pointing upwards, you're ready to insert the gauge. In the test kit, the gauge has been put in a nice, simple box to enable you for, to package it, uh, store it, and also for, if you need to send it away for recalibration or repair or test. The gauge slots in quite firmly, you push it through the hole with a nice little clunk, and that's it. The gauge is now installed. What test are we doing? Well, we're testing the air velocity. The size of the hose will make a huge difference to the air velocity. So I've got my hose end out of its storage bucket and using a ruler, which is fine, or you could use a vernier if you want to be absolutely precise, um, I'm going to measure the test hose, and in this case, 36 millimetres. There's always some ovality on hoses and connectors, um, so you're trying to take the size of the hose accurately. So 36 millimetres in this case. This process can get noisy, so we do recommend the use of ear defenders uh, for this process and warn your colleagues or put yourself in an area where a hearing protection zone or similar where you're going to protect your workers and colleagues uh, from noise. So we've now got some ear defenders on and these are 36 uh, decibel SNR and they're also push to talk so I can still hear what's going on. The gauge is inserted, we switch it on, it goes through a little self check it measures in millibar as standard, and we press zero if it needs zero in. So the display now is reading zero, zero, zero. Switching on our dust extractor, making sure there's no restriction over this end of the hose. I'll just drop the box lid down out of the way. Turn the, turn the machine on. Now the machine's running, we wait for the reading to stabilise. Some take longer to settle than others. If they've got a self-cleaning system, this may operate a couple of times first. We then consult the data tables. The data tables have got a range of data ranging from different hose sizes from 60 millimeters internal diameter down to 15 millimeters internal diameter. Manufacturers offer some standard hose sizes in this case 36, 27 and 21 millimeters for Hilti. So rather than looking at a huge data table you get to look at a smaller data set. Going back to our reading from earlier which was 6.4 millibar we simply find that in the data table 
find the corresponding hose size that we're measuring against, which in this case is 36 millimeters internal diameter. Marry that up and we can see that we've got an indicated air velocity for 6.4 millibar of 47.78 meters per second. For most machines there's uh, some sort of a, a uh, automatic cleaning system and in the case of this H-Class it's a manual cleaning system. It's a requirement of M and H-Class machines that they have a, a way of uh, backflowing or cleaning or pulse cleaning the filter. So when you do switch on the dust extractor it will make certain noises in some cases. So you'll hear solenoids activating to bash the filters clean or you'll hear a flap uh, operating to suck from one side of the filter compared to the other. Allow it to settle before you take your first reading. So I've now carried out the uh, reverse pulse on the machine. We achieved, with 36mm hose, we achieved 47.78 metres per second, which is well over the minimum requirement of 20. That's great news. That allows for additional loads once it's plugged into different types of power tool. Um, I'm now going to do the same test again and just see if that's improved the figure. So don't automatically assume if you're less than 20, the machine scrap. Uh, it may just be that the filter needs to go through its self-cleaning process. Once you've got your air defenders in place, turn on the dust extractor again. After running the self-clean, the indicated pressure is minus 7 millibar. This equates to 49.55 metres a second through a 36 millimetre hose. By doing the self-clean, we've gained 1.5 metres a second of air velocity. And that's cleaning filters on a clean machine. Imagine the improvement you'd get on a machine with used filters. As before, changing filters because they look dirty is poor practice. What we need to do is performance test, carry out self-cleaning and then re-performance test. Going through the instructions it then advises, is it 20 metres a second or more? Yes. Well that is a pass. If it's going out with two hoses, so for example it's going out with a 50mm hose and a 36, we simply use the data table to uh, quantify that result. That machine at this stage has passed. So we've now tested the air velocity, the maximum air velocity for that machine. We can record a pass. Fantastic. All M or H class machines carry a warning alarm or system that indicates when the filter is blocked or restricted. That advises the user to take action. In some cases it's a gauge, in some it's a light, and in others it's an audible warning. In the case of this machine, it's a red light. If I just move it around, the red light is indicated there with a decal advising you what you should do in the event of that light, showing which it's advising you to do a reverse pulse cleaning. How do we test the alarm? Well, we need to simulate that the hose is blocked. If you look in the instruction manual, so look back into your instruction manual, it then advises that you need to do stage two of the process, which is fitting a clamp, and that's on page seven. Fitting the clamp is relatively straightforward, just fit the clamp between the gauge and the machine. All we're simulating there is a blocked hose. So you've got your quick clamp, a six inch quick clamp, that simply slides on. And I'll just put that in position before I get my uh, ear protection in place. We do need hearing protection for this stage because the machine uh, can get quite noisy as it's trying to overcome the restriction. What we're going to do is turn the machine on and load up uh, the restriction by using the uh, quick clamp. As soon as the light starts to flicker and operate, I'll write down the millibar uh, that is indicated by the gauge and convert that to air velocity. So now I'm going to load up the clamp to simulate a blocked filter or blocked hose. We're gradually loading up the clamp to restrict the airflow and looking out for the light indicating. If it was a gauge, we'd look, be looking for it entering the red band. I'm now doing a voiceover whilst the vac's running and so you can't hear me but you can see my lips move. But what I'm trying to explain is that the gauge is now indicating 2.7 millibar when the light operates. So I'm now repeating the test and restricting the hose very gradually just to see that we've got consistency in operation to confirm the test result. Using the data table again we had a reading of 2.7, the closest to that is 2.78, and going across to a 36mm hose, we've got an indicated airspeed for the alarm activating of 31.86. And that's it. We've completed that stage of the test. That's all the performance test we need to do with this type of machine. Because 20 metres per second is absolutely critical, 
we need the light to operate at 20 metres a second or faster. So we need to know that the operator is getting a warning before it gets too slow. So before the airflow is that slow, it will not effectively pick up respirable dust. The machine's going out with two hoses. We simply use the table uh, to convert that to two different readings. Some machines have a variable hose setting where the user can dial in the size of the hose he's using and that'll change the alarm parameter. I've got a separate section of video showing how to carry out tests on those and it's also in the workbook. The last thing to consider now, this machine is nearly good to go. We'll remove the clamp, disconnect the gauge, that can go back into kit nice and safely. And something else I'd like you to consider is there is no reason for a client or user of equipment to take this head off and get into those filters. No reason. They're going to compromise themselves and their own safety. So one thing that we have been looking at for all types of dust extractor is some sort of a simple locking tag. So this is the sort of tags you get with fire extinguishers and that simply fits through and all we're going to do is lock off essentially this machine. Now this does not prevent the client or user getting in there. It just tells us that somebody has been. It's to just add that level of protection for both the end user and a higher company, if it's a company higher in the market, to say, we know that those filters are in good condition when they left to pass the performance test. Messing around with those filters or knocking them out or any of those sort of processes is potentially dangerous and will compromise the performance of the machine. Thanks very much. I hope this has been useful. Uh, there's an e-learning module to back up this, um, this video and that will be going live on learningforhire.com uh, very soon.